Hey, hey, Girl Scouts, Katie here from the product program team, and I am at the Indian Creek Zoo. I'm going to be talking with Amanda, the zookeeper here, that has these great sloths, and she's going to give us a lot of valuable information, important information, just for our Girl Scouts to find out more about sloths. I'm Amanda. Uh, I am a keeper here at Indian Creek Zoo. Uh, we're hanging out with our sloths today, so I can tell you guys all about them. This is Flash. He is our male sloth here at Indian Creek. These guys are two-toed sloths, which is kind of hard to tell, but they have these big old toes back here. Um, these guys come from the rainforest of South America. And I don't know if you can see him chewing. These guys are herbivores, so right now I'm giving him some mango. But they, out in the wild, eat all kinds of leaves and flowers and plants. Here at the zoo, these guys eat broccoli and sweet potato and zucchini, uh, yellow squash. They love mango and grapes. As we all kind of know, move quite slow, but actually that also includes their metabolism. So their metabolism is actually so slow, that's why they don't really move very fast, and also why they only go to the bathroom about once a week. So what that helps with is that these guys actually allows them to stay up in the trees more often because if they're out on the ground they're super vulnerable for predators and then he's actually right now you can see using his claw to help hold that food in his mouth because they don't have hands obviously like we do so they're going to use those claws to not only hold on to branches but they're also going to use them to hold on to their food because these guys don't have great eyesight so they're not always the best at perceiving what is a branch um, and what is not. So they do sometimes have a tendency to fall out of trees. However, they are really good at surviving those falls. But if they are on the ground, they're going to be more vulnerable to their predators, which include um, jungle cats, so ocelots, jaguars, leopards. Um, this really large eagle called a harpy eagle can easily swoop down and pick up a sloth. So their best defense is actually to stay hidden, um, which is one of the reasons they have survived so long. And these guys actually, what's really cool, is they will have lots of bugs and bacteria that live underneath their hair. Now to us, that sounds gross. But to them, it's actually really cool because they have a whole ecosystem that grows just in their hair. So it actually works, it's called a symbiotic relationship. So this means that they both get something out of it. The bugs and the bacteria get a home, and then the bugs and the bacteria help keep the sloth's hair nice and clean. Well, the reason I'm being careful when I'm handing him food is because these guys do have some pretty sharp teeth. But you're gonna notice that Flash is hanging upside down right now. These guys are gonna spend about 90% of their lives upside down, so don't, so when I'm handing him this food, he's got, his body has adapted so that way he can eat upside down. So they're going to mash that food up against some ridges on the top of their mouth, so that way he doesn't choke when he's upside down. But can you imagine spending all your time hanging like, <laughs> like this? That's why they have these really big claws to help hook on. And I don't know if you're able to tell, but they have these nice big pads right here that help protect their, their uh, arms and legs since they're spending so much time upside down. So we break them down into two-toed sloths and three-toed sloths. Um, and then, so there are actually um, different types of two-toed and three-toed. These guys are called, I'm gonna say it wrong, it's like uh, Linianus, Linianus uh, two-toed sloths, but we just call them two-toed sloths. Um, you're probably more likely to see, um, when it comes to stuffed animals and pictures, you're gonna be seeing a three-toed sloth. We have decided for some reason that three-toed sloths represent all sloths. So they're the ones that have the really cool stripe down their face. Um, they're very cute, so you usually see them in stuffed animal form. If you're at a zoo, you're most likely going to see someone like, like Flash here. You're going to see someone who's a two-toed sloth because they seem to thrive really well in captivity. And the whole reason that we do what like encounters and coming in here and hanging out with our sloths are because these guys get to be ambassadors for their species. So these guys aren't totally vulnerable yet in the wild, but they're on the brink of it because of deforestation. So because these guys rely so heavily on trees, it's really important that they get to keep those trees. Now, unfortunately, as a lot of us know, the rainforest is having a lot of problems where it is being knocked down for farmland, for livestock, it's being burned. 
Um, so Flash here, since he spends so much time hanging up in trees, if his tree's not there and he ends up on the ground, he's super vulnerable because they aren't able to defend themselves, they can't really hide very well. These guys are really bad at crawling. <laughs> They're great climbers. They're actually really good swimmers. So our job as keepers, outside of taking care of and doing a long time that education, is to let people know why these guys are so special and why we need to protect them and why we need to really do have an effort to protect the rainforest because we want to keep these cool guys around because everybody loves sloths. They're just such unique creatures that have somehow survived this long um, they have definitely learned how to adapt. So I knew from a very young age that I really wanted to work with animals. I always had a really big passion for it. Um, so it started when I was young where I just even was just helping my friends out with their animals where I would take their dogs for walks, I would house sit and dog sit up to where I, when I became a teenager, I volunteered at our other local zoo. I was there for about almost eight years. I was part of their zoo team program. So right after that, I started college where I studied biology and environmental science. Um, usually for keeping, uh, to be a zookeeper, you need to have an ology degree. So biology, zoology, um, if you're going to go into like marine biology, if you want to work with um, marine mammals or fish. Um, and then while I was in school, I worked at a science center where I took care of lots of different variety of animals um, from your domestic so like bunnies and guinea pigs up to exotics, so all kinds of different birds and stuff like that. And I also did a lot of education during that time because keeping is actually a lot more than just caring for animals. It's being able to talk to uh, the public about animals. So my job is not only to take care of them, but to also teach. So when I did that, I was in school for about five years um, and did all and worked at that science center the whole time. And then after I graduated, I actually worked for a vet. And you don't have to work for a vet, but I just decided that I really wanted to get some education um, working alongside vets to, to see the medical side of things. Um, but I knew that I always wanted to end up working with exotic animals. So I highly recommend if you're going to work at a zoo, I really um, say you should get to do internships, um, doing any type of volunteering at zoos. Zoos are always looking for volunteers. Now, just so you know, when you volunteer, you don't just play with animals all day. Um, we really need people to help out with the derby stuff, so cleaning up poop and everything like that. But it really helps the animals, and working side by side with keepers will allow you to get that experience, and you can talk to keepers and learn from them, um, and it looks really good on resumes when you eventually want to apply for a job, because zoos are always looking for people that have experience um, and are comfortable working with animals.